dark and wet evening and uh, to uh, be able to truly honor uh, Bonnie Henry's request to, to stay inside during this period. Um, and we're glad that we can help us all do that by staying inside and being able to have Shabbat together. We're going to have a special service tonight. They're always special, but uh, tonight in particular, uh, you know, uh, Remembrance Day hit right in the middle of the week. So the question was, do you do something last weekend or this weekend? Um, and uh, because last weekend was also the uh, anniversary for, for Kristallnacht, we didn't want to mix those two together. So tonight we will, uh, as part of our sermon slot, uh, share some um, Remembrance Day remembrances uh, and a special presentation about that. Uh, but why don't we begin, as we always do, with uh, an opening song with Cantor Tausig. And on page 128, in the middle of the page, Yadid Nefesh. Yadid Nefesh of Harachamon. Yadid Nefesh of Harachamon. Meshach of Decha. To page, we'll turn to page 131 as we uh, look to Psalm 96 for words of inspiration. The Shabbat Shiru Adonai Shir Chadash. We sing unto God a new song. Shiru Adonai Shir Chadash. Shiru Adonai Koharetz. Shiru Adonai Barchu Shemo Basru Miyom Leyom Yeshuato. The prove a goim cavodo, the hoamim nifleotav, Kigado adonai, whom hulal mayod, Nora who I'll call Elohim, my yahia, Yerra hida, da hida, da hida, da hida. Turn ahead in our prayer books. If you'd like to follow along in our Sidorim, you can. If you go to uh, the Temple Shalom website, templeshalom.ca slash video, you'll find just below this video window here, links to the Sidur, the prayer book. Uh, and we uh, will continue page 142 with Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elyon, me. Malachi Hamlachim Hakadosh Baruchu Bachem Lishalom Malachi Hashalom 
turn back in our prayer books to page 138. Uh, the Kabbalists of uh, mystical Judaism talk about Shabbat as a bride. We've talked about this, I know, many times about Sfat and that mystical place where uh, this poem was and this prayer was written. Uh, this idea that we welcome Shabbat as one would welcome a bride coming in uh, to their, their, their chuppah, to their wedding ceremony uh, with such joy and celebration. And uh, I think that, that even in these COVID times when the, uh, the concept of big weddings and parading through um, you know, a big social hall filled with people as we can imagine brides and grooms, imagine maybe, remember brides and grooms once did, um, you know, the, uh, the hope, the, the, the possibility that has been given with the news of, of the pending vaccines perhaps and their distribution, the, advancements even in these dark times of uh, increasing COVID cases in therapeutics and, and, and the hope and possibility of give us the, the ability to imagine and to dream of that day when uh, like a bride uh, and in this, uh, in this prayer and this poem, we will be able to celebrate again in one room. And if we stay home today, maybe we can celebrate in a room, in a room again sometime next spring. Um, or next fall, or next year, <laughs> um, but sometime. Uh, page 138, Lechadodi. Lechadodi, likrat kala, El Hamuchad Rona Echad, Ushmo Echad Lashemulti Perat, Letehila Lechadodi, Likrat Kala, Pene Shabbat Nekabala, Likrat Shabbat Lechu Vanelcha. He mekor ha beracha, me rosh me kadem ne sucha, sof ma seb machavate kila, lecha jodi, li krat kala, pene shabat ne kabela. Mikdash melech yer melucha, kumitzi mitocha hapecha, rav lach shevet beamecha bacha bhu yachamo, alaychem la lecha jodi, likrat kala, pene shabbat nekabela. He tore re, he tore re, Kiva ore, Umi ori, Uri ori, Shir da beri, Kaboda dona, Alayachem la, Lecha jodi, Likrat kala, Pene shabat nekabela. Moi vashalom teret bala, gam besimcha utala, tochemune am segula, boi chala, boi chala, 
Lecha Jodi Likrat Kala Fene Shabbat Nekabela. We'll turn to page 263 as we rise for Katsi Kadish. There she is, always right there when you need her. Uh, Rabbi Kerry Brown joins us on screen uh, to lead the rest of our service, or at least a portion thereof. Page 263, Chatsi <laughs> Bagala Bagala, who be his man, Karib, Behimeru, Amen, Yeshme Rabba Mevarach, the Alamo Meo Maya, he barach, he barach, Behishta Bafi, Parvi Tramam, the Hitna say, Vahita Dahar, Vahita Le, Vahita La. She made a kudisha barichu, lehelamin kober chatava shirata, tush bechatava nechemata, dami ram dehama, lehimeru, amen. Barichu et adonai hamevora. Baruch Adonai Amvorach Le'olam Vahed Baruch Adonai Amvorach Le'olam Vahed If you're standing at home, you may be seated as we read together in Ma'ariv Aravim on page 265. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim V'chochma Poteach She'arim Uvipuna Mishana Itim, Uma Khalif et Hazmanim, Umisadera Takochavim, the Mishmeroteam Barakia Kirtsono, Boreum Valaila, Golel or Mipne Hoshech, Bahoshech, Mipne or Uma Virium, Ume Vilaila, Uma Dil Benyom Uvein Laila, Adonai Tsuva Ochimo, El Haiva Kayam Tamid Imloch, Alenu Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai. Amariv Aravim. Amen. 266. Olam Nasiach bechu kacha, benismach bedivrei Torah techa, puvamitz vatecha, leolam leolam vahed, ki hem chayenu veyorech yamenu, uvahem negeyom hambalayla, veyahava techa al tasir mimenu, Le'olamim Baruch atah Adonai Oheb Ammo Yisrael Oheb Ammo Yisrael Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kavod Machuto Leolam Vahed. Ve'yavta et Adonai Elohecha, v'chol avavcha v'chol nafshecha v'chol meodecha. Behayu had a barim ha ele, a share an ochim et sabecha, a yom alabavecha. Vishinantam lavanecha, vidibarta, bum, 
Beshivtecha, Bevetecha, Velechtecha, Hava Derech, Uvashoch Becha, Ukumecha, Ukshar Tamlehod, Alia Decha, Veha Yulatota Fod, Vene Necha, Uchtav Tam, Almazuzod Betecha, Uvi Sharecha, Lemantis Keru, Vasi Tamet Tomis Votai, Item Kedoshim Lelohechem, Ani Adonai Lohechem, Asher Hotseti Adchem, Meeretz Mitzrayim, Lehiot Lechem Lelohim, Ani Adonai Lohechem. Amen. Continue now on page 270 with. Mi Chamocha, our song of redemption. Mi Chamocha, Beilim Adonai, Mi Chamocha, Nedar Bakodesh, Nora Tehilot, Oh Seifala, Nora Tehilot, Oh Seifala, Malchotecha, Rahu vanecha, bokei ayam lifnei, Moshe hu miriam, zehei anu veamru, Adonai imloch, Adonai imloch, leolam vahed. Benemar ki fadadonai tiakov, Baruch atah Adonai, Ka'al Yisrael. Amen. We, Rabbi Dan said in the beginning of the service, it's nice to be kind of tucked in at home in a, in a dark, cold night. Um, you know, we wish we could be in the warmth of the presence of one another in our sanctuary, but to be connected this way and to be safe and cozy in our homes is also really nice. And uh, each night as we pray Hashki Venu, we ask that God should help us have that sense of comfort and uh, I guess a bit of divine coziness too, that sense of being protected and, and safe in the storms around us. And uh, we just take a moment each night, I think especially now to just be grateful for the protection and uh, the safety that we find in our homes and uh, that we find by keeping keeping our distance from one another, but also by connecting in, in these uh, these ways of our modern technology. So we'll join together with Hashki Venu this prayer, asking God to spread a shelter, a sukkah of shalom over each and every one of us, page 271. Hashki Venu Adonai Eloheinu Shalom, the Shalom, the Hamide, who shall brain, who lechaim, who froze a lane, who so catch lomecha, who froze a lane, who so catch lomecha. Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu L'Shalom, L'Shalom, V'hamideinu Shomreinu L'Chaim. U'froz aleinu sukach lomecha, U'froz aleinu sukach lomecha, Amen. Each two seventy two Vishamru. Mishamru Vene Israel, et Hashabat, La Sot et Hashabat, Nadoro Tamberi Tolam. 
As we prepare now for the Amidah, we turn to page 274. I invite those of you who choose to please rise in your home as we begin with Avod Ve'imahot. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak ve'elohe Yaakov Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Bahanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Bezocher Chaste Avod Vimahod, Who may be Gola, Hibne Vneham, Leman Shemo Beyahava. Melech Ozer Moshiach Magen Baruch Atah Adonai Magen Avraham Bezrat Sarah Atagibor Leolam Adonai Mechayim Etim Atah Rab Lehoshiach Moshiv Haruach Morid Hagashem Mechok El Chayim Bechesed Mechayim Etim Berachanim Rabim so mech noflim berofei choholim, who matira surim, who mekayem emunato, ni shene hafar, mi chamo chabal gehevu rot, who mi jaho meloch, melech me mihid umechaye, who mats mi achyeshua. Venemana tala chayot meitim Baruch atadonai mechayeh hameitim Ata kadosh vashim cha kadosh Vukdoshim bechoyom yamalu chasala Baruch atadonai ha'el ha'kadosh Amen you are holy, your name is holy, and those who are holy praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. Amen. You may be seated. So we join together at the bottom of page 277 in that bottom paragraph, three lines down, kadshenu b'mitzvotecha. Kadshenu B'mitzvotecha B'tein chalkeinu B'toratecha Ad sheinu B'mitzvotecha V'tein chalkeinu B'toratecha Ay, ay, ay Sabeinu Mitu V'cha V'samecha Bishuatecha Tabeinu Mituvecha Vesamecheinu Bishuatecha Yadadai dai dai yadai Yadai dai 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 Yadai 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 dai 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 Yad I, 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 yad I
We'll read together in the middle of 278. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may we all live in such a way that this day fulfill its promise. Baruch ata Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Let's say Adonai Eloheinu Be'amecha Yisrael Utfilatam Be'ahava Tekabel Utfil Ratzon Tamid avodat Yisrael Yisrael amecha El karov lechol korah p'nei El avadecha v'choneinu Shefoch roh One of the themes that comes up pretty regularly when we study this week's parasha, Chaye Sarah, is the theme of kindness. We have the beautiful story of Rebecca, who happens to be at the well, uh, as that was the hangout place of ancient Israel. And uh, actually, she was not in Israel. She was in uh, in Ur, in the ancestral home of, uh, of Abraham and Sarah, when uh, Abraham had sent his servant Eliezer to go find a bride for Isaac. And uh, he was at the well and Rebecca happened to be there and uh, showed him this really beautiful example of kindness by giving him water, but also offering water to his camels. And, uh, and we hold that as this, this uh, beautiful example of chesed, of loving kindness that she did um, that not only was it a, a beautiful thing that she did, but also it, it was a catalyst for everything that came after. It was because of her kindness that Eliezer noticed her and she then, uh, what he realized would be the perfect match for Isaac. And, uh, and the story continues from there to, uh, to our history and, and to our very day. Um, but I, I've been thinking a, lo a lot about kindness as, as I've been looking at this parasha and how much indeed one small act of kindness can really uh, impact the world. And I think as we um, approach this next part of our service, as we always do with, with gratitude, our Hoda'a prayer, um, that maybe the Shabbat in, in honor and memory of Rebecca, we can um, hold on to a, a moment of kindness that we experienced uh, this week or in recent days 
um, that we can see that that had an impact in our in our lives and our day. Um, and thinking about how we can hold that and also then also give it to others. Um, I think that that's one of the beautiful things about kindness is the contagiousness of it, um, that, uh, that when we experience kindness, we're much more likely to want to put it out into the world. And if we make an effort to put it out into the world, well, the ripples that can come from that uh, are, are really endless. So we'll join together in giving thanks for kindness and the kindness that uh, we have all experienced in our lives as we join together the middle of 281 the al kulam be al kulam be al kulam it barakh bi tromam it barakh bi tromam shim khamakenu ta Pray for a shalom, wholeness, and peace in our world, page 282. Shalom Rabba Israel Amcha, Tasim Leolam. Shalom Rabba Israel Amcha, Tasim Leolam. Keatahu Malachadon, Lechoha Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, Rabba Israel Amcha, Tasim Leolam, Shalom, Rabba Israel Amcha, Tasim Leolam, Beto Benecha Lebarech, Et Amcha Yisrael. Bechol to Vachosha, Vishlom Echa, Shalom Rava Israel Amcha, Tasim Leolam, Shalom Rava Israel Amcha, Tasim Leolam, Baruch Adonai. Mavarech de Mo Israel, Bashalom. Amen. Take a moment now for a silent prayer. Oh, 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 oh,
Shalom. Aleinu. So I'll invite everyone if you'll turn ahead in your Sidur to page 371. In the middle of the page, we have our Misha Berach, our prayer of healing for those loved ones in our community and beyond who are ill, those who are struggling, and those who are just needing our prayers. And uh, we think of them and um, hold them very much in our hearts. And we think especially of Jack Karp, Ralph Schulman, Svi Katz, Elizabeth Katz, Ellen Becker, Davina Muchnick Golden, Maylor Valance, Tobin Robbins, Elliot Pohl, Sanford Cohen, Schneer Zalman Ben Mayer Leib, Jean Angus, Sarah Chiachi, Helen Heacock Rivers, Mary Coheen, Kim Bennett, Johanna Bat Gershon Vyosefa, Sarah Bat Avraham Vasara, Igor Ilyasov, Ed Ozer, David Shlomo Gorney, Denise Huget, Ronnie Goldberg, Andrea Jarjbiak, Maureen Newman, Neil Tapley, and Yana Timko. And I invite you, if there are other names of people you're thinking of, if you would like to share them out loud or in your heart so that we can also include them in our prayers. Join together. Me Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's, uh, it's good. I won't say it's good to see you, but I, I'm not seeing anybody. Um, I uh, wanted to share a few announcements uh, with you before we turn to our Remembrance Day uh, program for the evening. Uh, first, if I can share via a screenshot here, which I think I can do. Uh, this, uh, this morning, in a very COVID safe kind of way, I had the privilege of joining Ezra Shankin at the Jewish Federation. Ezra, of course, is the CEO of our Jewish Federation and presenting him a check uh, for more than $5,000, money raised from our half shekel campaign for those that designated that 25% of their tzedakah uh, to the Temple Shalom um, half shekel campaign should go to the Federation's COVID relief fund. Uh, and we know that those funds are desperately needed in our community. Uh, and so it was a pleasure to, to put on a mask and actually see somebody in person for a little bit and to, uh, and to present that, uh, that check. I would say it's a very large check. Financially, it's a significant amount of money, but the check itself was one of those big ones. Uh, but I gave him a real one that he could take to the bank as well. So that was nice to be able to do. And uh, Ezra uh, sent out a, a thank you to our congregation via social media. And I'm sure there'll be more mentions of it uh, coming up soon. Uh, I also wanted to share with you uh, some announcements of programs that are happening at the synagogue. We are very excited uh, tomorrow morning that Rabbi Andrea Weiss, 
uh, who is a uh, scholar, who will be our scholar in residence and one of the editors of the uh, Women's Torah Commentary uh, from URJ Press and the Women of Reform Judaism uh, is going to join us as our scholar in residence tomorrow uh, during our Shabbat service. So please join us. 10 o'clock is the service. Rabbi Weiss will present during the Devar Torah slot and maybe we'll have a little bit of an extended um, learning with her during that, uh, that slot of our service. And then join us again on November 17th um, when she's going to be uh, leading an interactive conversation, what Rebecca teaches about the literary artistry of the Torah. And all this, of course, is in celebration of our sister Hood's Rosh Chodesh group and their completion of a full cycle of Torah study using the Women's Torah Commentary. And we thank our sisterhood for bringing Rabbi Weiss uh, to our congregation virtually as it is, but still it'll be wonderful to study with her. Uh, we are excited tomorrow night for the second in our film series. Uh, I'm very excited about it. This has been a very powerful film and I'm looking forward to the conversation that we're going to have. Tomorrow's film is Just Mercy. Um, it's uh, the, um, the Brian Stevenson story, if you're familiar with Brian Stevenson and the Innocence Project and the work that he's done on people that are wrongfully incarcerated uh, in the United States, but really has served as a template for that kind of work uh, in, in other, I will say, uh, you know, Western countries, democracies uh, around the world, and particularly here in Canada. So we're going to be joined by uh, lawyer Rachel Barsky, who um, is actually leading up a case uh, that's very similar uh, to the work that uh, Brian Stevenson did uh, and has worked with the Canadian version of the Innocence Project. I had a chance to chat with uh, Ms. Barsky uh, yesterday and today in preparation for our conversation. I'm very excited about the things that we'll be discussing. So I hope you'll join us for that. Um, if you have a bar bat mitzvah coming up in 2023, uh, which means your child is probably currently in grade five, uh, join us Wednesday night. We've actually just changed this time. It's now 7.30 and we'll send out an update about that. Torah study and Talmud study continue with Rabbi Brown and with our uh, Saturday morning Talmud study group, Torah study group. Um, we have on November 25th, uh, we'll be joined by a real friend of the congregation and, and one of the mentors in my life, uh, Rabbi Danny Siegel, uh, for a book launch of his new book of Jewish poetry and text, uh, Radiance Creative Mitzvah Living. Uh, Danny is uh, the mitzvah maven, and he's been doing this work uh, on the ground firsthand in Israel and around the world and really teaching about how mitzvah is a verb and that uh, the, the actions that we take are the manifestation of the beliefs that we have. Uh, so join us for that conversation um, via Zoom on Wednesday, the 25th. Um, Tat Shabbat has moved from the tent because it's cold and wet to Zoom now on Saturday mornings at 11 o'clock. So join Annette and our young families there. We are adding back now a uh, virtual Habdalah at 7.30 on Saturday nights via Zoom. So join us for that. It's geared towards families with children, but everybody is welcome. Join us for 15 minutes or so for a Shabbat, for a end of Shabbat song and story and a Havdalah ritual. And of course, uh, coming up on Saturday, November 28th is our Sisterhood Fall Fest fundraiser, an 80s themes fall fest. Uh, that'll be via Zoom as well. And on uh, next Thursday, November 19th, uh, there's a lot going on at the shul, even though we're not at the shul. Our men's club is hosting a conversation with Dr. Neil Pollack and his colleague, Dr. Ruzba Ahmadi about men's health. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, other information is available in your, um, your emails from the synagogue. So um, it is remember, it has been, or it was this past week, Remembrance Day, always a very special uh, moment in our um, Canadian community. I, I note coming here uh, from the United States where Veterans Day and Memorial Day are really noted for the barbecues and the sales that take place in the malls. Uh, it's different here in Canada. I, I love how different it is, not just the poppies, but the solemnity of the moment, the fact that people really take the time to, to reflect and, and appreciate the members of our armed services, uh, but not, uh, not to go out and party and celebrate. And um, we, uh, we have always had, or I should say, since I had arrived here at the congregation, I had, we had been blessed to uh, be joined by Alan Kay, Zichron Nivracha, uh, a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, Canadian Forces that served in World War II uh, in Burma. Uh, Alan died this past year and uh, I miss him terribly as of course his family and friends do. And uh, we cast it around to try to find a, a veteran, that, a Jewish veteran that could join us via Zoom even if I recorded it early uh, and uh, ran into a number of roadblocks. Uh, we found Jewish veterans, many of them are out 
on, um, on deployment and unable to con communicate with us via Zoom for security reasons and, and other technical issues. Um, and, but still, there is, um, is a book that I've read recently that uh, speaks about the history of um, Jews in the Canadian Armed Forces and the Canadian Forces. And the author of that book did a, a brief talk in Toronto for Remembrance Day just two days ago. And I happened to capture that talk. And so I wanted to bring it to you. And then another segment that I'll share with you via video, because I thought that it was illuminating about the contribution that uh, Canadian Jews have made um, to the defense of Canada and really to the defense of freedom uh, and, and liberty uh, around the world, uh, particularly as this talk will be uh, uh, focusing on uh, World War II, but, but really um, throughout uh, Canadian history, uh, Jews have played an important role in our military. So I wanna share that with you uh, now, it's about eight minutes or so, and then I'm gonna come back on screen, share a little bit more and share one more brief um, video clip with you. So let me, uh, let me share this with you now. I'm Ellen Besner, a journalist and the author of Double Threat, the book which tells the stories of the 17,000 Canadians of Jewish faith who served in World War II. I'm honored to be speaking with you today from here, the Jewish War Memorial section of Mount Sinai Cemetery in Toronto, as we mark a Remembrance Day unlike any other, as the world struggles with the COVID-19 pandemic and no clear sign when and how it will end. It's eerily reminiscent of the time in the late 1930s when the Second World War broke out and Canada's Jewish population mobilized to fight for freedom and democracy and against hatred and bigotry and totalitarianism. They went to fight for king and country, but also to save their own people from Hitler's final solution. For the young Jewish teenagers of those days, the 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, they had to make a hard choice. Do they leave behind their family, their friends, their school, and their jobs for an uncertain fate? The Canadian Jewish personnel who went to war faced a similar risk as their non-Jewish comrades in arms, the risk of being killed on the battlefield. But for the Jewish personnel, their risk was a great personal risk because had they been captured by the Nazis or the enemy and their Jewish identities were discovered, their fate would be very dark indeed. They also faced widespread anti-Semitism at home, in the ranks, and on the battlefield. All of these challenges they met with bravery and courage. They fought in all the major battles, from Dunkirk to D-Day, on land, at sea, and in the air. You may not know that about 200 Canadians of Jewish faith were awarded bravery medals, like Sidney Shulamson of Montreal. He was Canada's highest scoring Jewish Air Force ace. He shot down seven German planes. He sank 12 or 13 German ships, and yet he was never promoted past the rank of flight lieutenant, which is captain. He also won two medals, the DFC and the DSO. Men like Ben Dunkelman, who nearly didn't even get into the war, also won two medals. Dunkelman enlisted in the Canadian Navy, but he was never called for nine months until one of his friends told him that Jews were not welcome in the Canadian Navy as officers. Despite the fact that he owned and his family owned Tip Top Tailors, he had gone to Upper Canada College and also knew how to sail. He owned his own yacht. So he eventually joined the Queen's Own Rifles and became a decorated hero and earned the nickname Base Plate Benny. Dr. Jack Markowitz of Toronto was a famous doctor, surgeon and researcher in Toronto. But Canada's army wouldn't take him because he hadn't been naturalized yet although he always felt it was because he was a Jew who had been born in Romania. Marco went to London to sign up with British intelligence. Later, he served with the British as an army doctor in Singapore until he was captured by the Japanese. Marco spent three years in Japanese hands, in slave labor camps, in primitive jungle conditions, caring for the other prisoners who were building a road and bridge. He did hundreds of amputations. He was tortured. And when the war ended, he was decorated with a British Empire medal. He would never forgive Canada for not letting him serve. He suffered from what we now know was PTSD. Some of the other more well-known Canadian Jews who served included Monty Hall, a game show host originally from Winnipeg. He was turned down by the tank corps because, I don't think they're taking Jews, he was told. He served later in the entertainment units around Manitoba. Comedians Johnny Wayne and Frank Schuster were already famous for their radio shows. 
They dodged bullets and bombs to put on shows for the exhausted men in caves off the beaches of Normandy in the summer right after D-Day. The director of Love Story, Arthur Hiller, served as a navigator in the RCAF, and Robert Mervish, the brother of entrepreneur Ed Mervish, served in the U.S. forces. Comedian David Steinberg's oldest brother, Jaime, quit his job as a Winnipeg sports reporter to join the RCAF at 17 and a half. He bugged his parents and bugged them and bugged them to allow him to join up, even underage. Senator David Kroll, the former two-time mayor of Windsor, saw action overseas, as did Barney Danson, a Toronto-based cabinet minister. He lost an eye in action and three of his best friends. There were athletes, too, including Harry Campbell, a lacrosse player from the Montreal Maroons, Mitch Peckett of Kubar, Saskatchewan with the New York Rangers farm team, and Mo Hurwitz, a Montreal hockey player who turned down a tryout with the Boston Bruins because how can I play hockey when millions of my brothers are being killed, he said. It wasn't only famous Jewish families whose sons and daughters served. Truck drivers, tailors, fruit peddlers, shippers, dry cleaners, farmers, dentists, doctors, and lawyers. Jeweler Gerald Levinston was in charge of feeding and equipping the Canadian Army as they marched from Normandy to Berlin. Later, he was put in charge of taking the German surrender in May 1945. His general told him, I want a Jew to tell those bastards what to do. Even the sons of rabbis did their duty, especially the seven sons of the Mazer family of Ottawa. In fact, 16 rabbis served as chaplains. Some went overseas to minister to the men of their own faith and then help rebuild European Jewry once the war ended and the camps were liberated. Canada's women pitched in, too, both at home fundraising and sending comfort packages full of cigarettes and kosher salamis to the men overseas, while about 270 Jewish women served in uniform, including Rose Goodman of New Glasgow, Nova Scotia, who served as an adjutant at an Air Force base south of Calgary, and Daisy Lazar of Quebec City, a military police officer stationed in Ottawa. Mimi Friedman of Montreal spoke five languages, drove an ambulance in London, England during the Blitz, and was the only Canadian Jewish woman in uniform decorated for bravery, winning a mention in dispatches. Nearly 450 Canadian Jews paid the ultimate price during World War II. While some are buried in carefully maintained war cemeteries around the world, including in Hong Kong, Juneau Beach, Italy, Germany, and Holland, others have no known grave their bodies were never found to bury. So their names are on memorials across the country, like this one here at the Mount Sinai Cemetery in Toronto, which the Royal Canadian Legion Wingate Branch raised the money for to erect an evocative sculpture. It has the names of those Jews who fought and died not in just the Second World War, but also the First World War in battles of Vimy and the Somme and Passchendaele and Korea. A monument like this also sits in Montreal's Baron de Hirsch Cemetery, it has 579 names and is lovingly curated by Larry Rosenthal in honor of his brother Willie Velvel Rosenthal, a gunner who was killed in Italy in 1943. Willie was a journalist, and one of his letters home published in the local YMHA newspaper reminds us what our veterans fought for all those years ago so we could live in freedom. For the dead shall not have fallen in vain, not in a world where our holy sanctuaries are safe and unmolested, in a world where organizations, institutions of culture and learning and education are respected and upheld and supported. No price is too great to pay, no life too precious to enforce our beliefs and ideals, he wrote. That veteran's message rings true even more today, as we live in a world with widespread anti-Semitism, record levels of anti-Semitic incidents, according to B'nai B'rith and Canadian police figures, but also other forms of intolerance and hatred, anti-black racism, Islamophobia, and more. And as one of our veterans who just died a few days ago, Harry Hurwitz asked us to do in his dying wish is to honor our veterans. And you can do that by remembering that remembrance is not just to wear a poppy a few days a year or to stand at a moment of silence on Remembrance Day. Make remembrance an active verb. If you see intolerance, say something, do something, march, educate, call it out. Remember is an active verb.
turn my mic and camera on. <laughs> um, I hope that you enjoyed that and found it uh, as fascinating as I did. Uh, Ellen is really doing some incredible work uh, in uh, the historical research and uh, contributing to our body of knowledge about uh, the service of uh, Canadian Jews in our armed forces. Uh, and then as I was diving a little deeper into the work that she's done, I discovered that she's not only a researcher, but she's also an activist. And uh, I don't know if you caught this on the news the other night, but that sort of pulled these two things together about remembrance being an active verb, Remembrance Day being an active verb, and what we can do to honor the memory of those uh, who have fallen and served our country. And so there was a, a news report on Global News uh, the other night that I also captured in just three minutes. I wanted to share it with you. And I think it brings all of this together for us on this uh, Remembrance Day week. Tomorrow we will observe Remembrance Day and honor all those who fought and never came home. Thousands are buried in war grave cemeteries, many of the graves marked with a name and a simple cross. But not all of those who were killed were Christian. And now, 75 years after the end of the Second World War, there's an effort to fix some old mistakes. Abigail Beeman has the story. He served overseas in 101 Squadron based in England, which was the squadron that had probably the most losses. Morley was uh, fortunate enough to bail out when the plane was shot down, but he landed in a tree. We don't know exactly what happened except the locals told investigators that the Germans shot him. They shot him while he hung there. So it was a very terrible situation. Morley Ornstein was just 20, killed in action in the Second World War. A cross ended up marking his grave in Germany. Even though it's clear that he was of Jewish faith. And uh, it, 75 years went by and nobody noticed until I did. Ellen Besner wrote Double Threat, a book about the 17,000 Canadian Jews who served in that war. When she noticed the cross, she wanted to make it right. I'm a mom of boys who are that age, and Morley died and sacrificed himself so that my kids could go to university, my kids could finish high school, and my kids could have a life here in freedom in Canada. And it was the least I could do to fix it. Bessner reached out to a British historian who's worked tirelessly changing more than a hundred incorrect war grave emblems to Stars of David. It's part of the struggle against anti-Semitism. It's part of the struggle against people who lie about that Jews didn't serve in proportion to their numbers in the population, when in fact the reverse is true. Besner gathered Ornstein's war records. You can see his own handwriting identifying himself as Hebrew. In this house he lived for about two years. Then came an incredible boost from another Morley who grew up on the very same Toronto street. I remember meeting Morley. I sort of got a big grin on my face. Somebody finally has the same name as I do. 92-year-old Morley Wolf has vivid memories of the Ornstein family. He wrote a letter to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Both my parents spoke Yiddish, and I certainly have a clear recollection of Morley's parents conversing with mine on occasion in Yiddish. Their efforts worked. The different pieces of the puzzle that come together to mean that we can be confident that he identified as a Jew, and therefore that is the most appropriate religious emblem um, to be going onto his headstone. The transport process to the cemetery in Germany is being held up by the pandemic, but Flying Officer Morley Ornstein's new stone is ready. We showed it to his old friend. Lovely. Well earned. Well deserved. Those involved hope sharing Ornstein's story could help find some relatives. The commission was never able to all those years ago. Abigail Beeman, Global News. For Morley and... We'll have live coverage of tomorrow's remembrance. For Morley and for all of those who served uh, and who died in defense of freedom and justice, we remember them on this uh, week of Remembrance Day as we do always. And we remember particularly this... Uh, this Shabbat, Alan Kay, who graced our Bima for so many years with his stories, with his reading of In Flanders Field and uh, his just remarkable and heroic presence. May their memories be a blessing on them.
Our service continues, page 586, as we rise for Elenu. Alenu le shabach la don ha kol ha teik gudulali otzer breishit shelo asanu kigo yeharatzot velo samhanu k'mishpachot adama shelo samchal kenu kaham vegor alenu k'chohamonam anachnu korim u'mishtachadim u'modim. Lifnei Malach Malchei Hamlachim HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shehu Notei Shamayim Veyoser Aretz Humoshe Vekaro Bashamayim Imahal Hushchein Atuzo Hushchein Atuzo Begove Meromim Hu Eloheinu Einod Emet Malkeinu Vesulato, Akatu, Betorato, Verdata Hayom, Verdata Hayom, Vashevota, Eleva Vecha, Ki Adonai, who Elohim, Basha Mohim, Mahal, Beharet, Beharet, Mita. Venemar Vahyadonai Lemalechal Koharetz Bayom Hahu Bayom Hahu Yadonai Echad Pushemo 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 Our thoughts turn now to family and loved ones who are not with us and whose presence, though, is always felt. We recall them for blessing at this time as uh, we turn in our prayer books to a poem before the reading of Kaddish, page 596. We have lived in numberless towns and villages, and in too many of them we have endured cruel suffering. Some we have forgotten, others are sealed in our memory a wound that does not heal. A hundred generations of victims and martyrs, still their blood cries out from the earth. And so many, so many at Dachau, at Buchenwald, at Babiyar. What can we say? What can we do? How to bear the unbearable or accept what life has brought our, to our people? All who are born must die, but how shall we compare the slow passage of time with the callous slaughter of the innocent cut off before their time. They lived with faith, not all but many, and surely many died with faith in God, in life, in the goodness that even flames cannot destroy. May we find a way to strengthen to the, to the strength of that faith, that trust, that sure sense that life and soul endure beyond this body's death. They have left their lives to us. Let a million prayers rise wherever Jews worship, that a million candles glow against the darkness of their unfinished lives. This Shabbat, we recall those who died during this past week, these past 30 days, whose families are in the midst of Shiva and Shloshim. We remember them for blessing at this time. We recall a blessed memory, Temi Bernstein, Nellie Nash, Maida Portnoy, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, Judy Seip, and Bob Bidner, whose funeral will be, as you saw in your email, this Sunday at the Temple Shalom Cemetery. We also recall those who died during this time in seasons past, whose yort site, the anniversary of their death, falls on this Shabbat. Ron Babbins, Benjamin Baker, Thomas Edgar, Thomas Edgar Bloom, Nathan Bueller, Mira Chochnov, Sadie Cohen, Jules Cohen, Helena Dorkison. Bob Feldstein, Bella Garfinkel, Sarah Gelhorn, Melanie Gold, John Henry, Peter Cantor, Alan Karlinski, Mina Katz, Samuel Lampert, Joseph Leffert, Nathan Lipson, Israel Marcus, Esther Mattis, Matis, Beatrice Michaelberg, Benjamin Moyles, 
Jack Ozer, Pepe Ozier, Elizabeth Raikin, Eddie Reiki, Ben Rosenbaum, Alice Sangro, Lou Simkin, Wilfred Smith, Ephraim Smith, Elsie Switzer, Victoria Twombly, Jimmy White, Harry Weissman, Bell Weissman, Mary Nicolina Warmelli, Shmuel Zeberman. There are others who have names for Kaddish. If you're remembering loved ones, I invite you to call those names out loud in your homes or quietly in your hearts, or even to type them into the chat below this video screen so that we can join you in mourning and remembering them. We add to the names that we've shared, the names of all of those who've died in defense of freedom and justice, those victims of terror in this land, the land of Israel, around the world, those members of our armed forces, as well as those who died in the Shoah and the Holocaust that have no family left to remember them. We recall them for blessing as well as we join together in Kadisha Atom, the Mourner's Kaddish, page 598. Please rise. Yikadal vid Kadash Shemei Rabbah, Yoma divrach irutev yamlich malchute, Vachayachon of Yomechon of Hayed Chol Beit Israel, Vagalav is man kariv, Limaru, Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah Mavarach Lelam Ulame Omaya, Yit Barach Vish Tabach Vit Paar Vit Roman Vit Nase, Vit Adar Vit Ale Vit Alal, Shemei de Kudisha Brichu, Le Elam in Kol Birchata Vishirata, Tushbechata Venechemata, Damin Ronbe Alma, Limaru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vachayim, Alenu, we are Kol Yisrael, Limaru, Amen. O say Shalom, be Momal, Uya, a say Shalom, Alenu, we are Kol Yisrael, or Kol Yoshbe Tevel, Limaru, Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort the bereaved among us, and we say together, Amen. A reminder that tomorrow morning we have a very special uh, service which uh, will include uh, Dr. Uh, Andrea Weiss. Uh, as our scholar in residence for our Sisterhood's Rose Kodesh group, as she'll share with us insights about the women's Torah commentary that she was an author of, and of course, about this week's Parsha, Chaye Sarah, and I'm sure other things as well. We look forward to sharing that with you. Please join us tomorrow night um, for our movie night, uh, Just Mercy. If you're looking for something to do after services tonight, it's not too late to watch it on Amazon or Netflix or wherever you'll find it or tomorrow afternoon. And then uh, join us online. You can sign up uh, it's a Zoom conversation. There's a participation part in it as well. I hope you'll join us for that. And we begin that with Havdalah tomorrow at seven o'clock. Rabbi Brown, Cantor Tausig, so great to be with you um, and not have to go outside to do it. <laughs> um, a closing song. Oh, say shalom bim romav, huya say shalom aleinu, ve'al kol Israel. Ve'al kol yoshvei tevel ve'imru amen. Oh, say shalom b'mromav. Who ya say shalom aleinu? Ve'al kol Israel ve'al kol yoshvei tevel ve'imru amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Again, we'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. for uh, Rabbi Weiss and our Shabbat service. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Be safe.